Welcome to Soulfully Aligned You, Mindset and Strategy for Multi-Passionate Mompreneur Coaches and Creatives. This is the podcast where we talk about and teach confident mindsets, overcoming limiting beliefs at the subconscious level, and online brand strategies to help you build out your signature services, get more visible with your target audience, and boldly launch out in the online world with your God-given gifts. I believe God cares more about your soul than your success. So get in alignment with his will and what he thinks of you so you can activate the success he already has planned for you. Okay, I'm going to open up with this quote. The insatiable goals to acquire more, succeed conspicuously, and be as attractive as possible lead us to objectify one another and even ourselves. When people see themselves as a little more than their attractive bodies, jobs, or bank accounts, it brings great suffering. You become a heartless taskmaster of yourself, seeing yourself as nothing more than homo economicists. Love and fun are sacrificed for another day of work in search of a positive internal answer to the question, am I successful yet? We become cardboard cutouts of real people. Y'all, did that quote hit? That quote was from a Harvard professor, Arthur Brooks. And he has spent years researching this association, foolish association between achievement, satisfaction, wealth, satisfaction, um, notoriety, and satisfaction, right? And so, and I want to give you guys a a statistic as well. There was a study that said 72% of successful entrepreneurs suffer from depression or other mental health concerns. And CEOs may be depressed at more than double the rate of the public at large. So I share these things with you all because they're, you know, the topic of this is why do high achievers, why don't they feel successful? Right? And Part of it is the, you know, the natural tendency for us as people to associate our success with satisfaction. But there's also something a little bit deeper that I wanted to talk about. And y'all will hear me kind of clicking around over here. But there's something called a high achiever wound. And I think that that is that deeper subconscious part, like on the surface we see sometimes we make those connections of satisfaction and success but for a high achiever there's a deeper wound of low self-esteem insecurity that has stemmed from childhood so y'all I'm just going right in first two minutes giving it to you right um for high achievers we definitely set the bar high for ourselves. Like I identify as a high achiever. I will say recovering high achiever <laughs> because I've learned so much about this and seen it just operating in my own life. So I'm, I fully know if you are a high achiever, I fully know what you're, what you're feeling, what you're going through and how you keep moving the benchmark for yourself, right? So you have your accomplishments, but as you attain them, they become less valuable, it was like, oh, I did that. And part of it is this idea of, oh, since I was able to do that, then it must not have been that hard. It must not have been that um, great. It's not that something that's worth like to write home about. And it comes from that deeper part of you that operates, that has that insecurity and low self-esteem. And it's, it's hard to identify that wound sometimes because you show up. Right. You show up, you set the goals, you achieve them, but you'll you'll know if you have this wound based on how you feel after the achievement. Right. Was it almost like you couldn't celebrate yourself? Was it almost like, OK, on to the next thing? Right. This there's another part, too, for most high achievers. The price for our success is sometimes alienation and loneliness. So. If you are so focused on achieving and hitting that goal and it's almost like you have this tunnel vision and nothing on the outside exists and you kind of put other things to the wayside, even sometimes friendships go to the wayside and you become 
lonely and alienated, or at least you feel like you are, because those people still love you. Those people are still there. They're just saying, oh, you're always busy. You've got stuff to do, right? You're doing such great things in the world that they can see, and they realize it takes a lot of your time and energy, but you're not seeing it that way, because it's just the natural way of you showing up and the natural way of you tackling your assignments, and you're missing out on relationships. You almost probably sometimes feel like you don't have the time or space to take a break, to sit still. There's this level of restlessness that happens for high achievers. Um, so yeah, it can, it can kind of feel like that. Another thing, um, this wound, I'm, you know, identifying pieces of this high achiever wound is your skewed self-perception, right? And it goes back to maybe there was some invalidation in your environment when you were um, younger, maybe you weren't seen, maybe if you were overlooked, you didn't feel like you were doing enough to be loved or doing enough to be seen and validated and valued in your environment. So it's almost like you, you, you're already coming from this place of insecurity and invalidation and low self-esteem. So you're feeling like you have to do in order to be accepted. You feel like you have to accomplish something to produce something in order to be valuable to those around you. Can you imagine for a homeschool mom, I'm sorry, not even a homeschool mom, but just a mother in general, where if you have this high achiever wound, you feel like you have to do everything for your family and there's no time for yourself. And high achiever wound in relationships where you're going above and beyond in these new dating relationships and you're trying to do so much and this person can even be repelled by it because they're like whoa she's doing too much he's doing too much they can feel the energy of you trying to prove yourself to them and they don't want that when we go into these relationships we want it has to be two whole people right if you're you're coming in a relationship with someone else who has that confidence already about them and they don't have this high achiever wound they are feeling the vibes of that and it's not two healed people coming together two whole people coming together and that's where it can kind of be that repelling happening and then imagine this in business right if you are constantly doing 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 you're you've probably you know, accomplish so much in your business already from speaking on stages to authoring books to um, having a beautiful, beautiful testimonials from all your clients and everything. But there's still that part of you that feels like it wasn't enough. It isn't enough. I still got to go do more. Right. And the crazy part is how our, your brain works. Um, well, our brain that has a reward system. We all know about this. It's that neurotransmitter um, dopamine and that dopamine is going to drive you to achieve goals and rewards, right? You get that sense of pleasure every time you achieve a goal. That is your reward. But that pleasure is then short lived and then your brain is going looking for it again and seeking, you know, this balance of from the extreme emotional states of like, oh, I did something. It was so great. I'm rewarded. And then you go back down and you're working on trying to achieve it again. And you're just super focused on that, right? You have an emptiness, a longing to repeat that same high level of achievement that you got before that brought it there in the first place. And it's a cycle uh, and it's, it's, it's actually addictive because I, I can, I can resonate and give you an example on this. Like even in my business, like I, I talk about my beauty agency, my makeup business quite a bit. And when I first started, it was, man, if I could just do one wedding, I would be so happy with myself. I, I, my very first wedding, cause I was stuck in a realm of like photography stuff all the time. And I was like, man, I want to really be able to do an event. And once I did, it was like, oh, I did it. I needed to do more and I needed to do more and I needed to do more. And then eventually I'm doing 10, 12 people parties for weddings and still feeling like, okay, what's the next thing I got to achieve to be successful? Oh, I've got to be on set. I've got to do it on film. I've got to do a commercial. It was like the bar just kept raising and raising. And yes, every time I hit one of those things, I got the pleasure and I went seeking for something else again. And I, it would be so short lived y'all when I would have these accomplishments, it would be so, so short-lived because for one, 
operating from a high achiever wound means that I'm only seeking these things because I think they're going to make other people's perception of me is going to be that, oh, Justina's doing something, doing good things. Justina is qualified to work with us, right? When I was already qualified without all of the, um, without all the accolades, you are already qualified. You're already justified because God has put you on the path and God called you to it. So you don't need all the rewards and accolades and achievements and all those things to make you qualified. And that's the thing. If we're coming from that place, right, of I have to have these things in order to be enough for other people, that's the wound. And then the part, that's the internal, like, emotional wound that you're dealing with. But then your brain is also needed to be rewired because you've already wired your brain for these dopamine hits and you've already made sense of those things to say that this is what makes me enough. So now what do we have to do? Rewire the brain. And this is what I love about the mind body work that I do is because Holy Spirit invites you to um, build capacity in other emotions, right? There's some other emotions that you need to be able to tap into. And that can be um, trust, right? Trusting in the Father and knowing that he has made you enough. That could be um, being in sync with the Father and knowing that he is the one that validates you. It can be you being wanted, knowing that you're already loved and already wanted and already cherished and already favored and already enough because of what God did at the cross. Though, though that's the capacity building and the rewiring that can happen in your brain through mind body work to come back with this high achiever wound, to come back with this not enoughness that you've already established in your brain. We can do that through um, mind body work, through that through. Swankna, EFT, all the beautiful modalities that we have at Soulfully Aligned You. So when we talk about so being soulfully aligned, it is so much deeper than just having an aligned message that goes out to your audience. It really is about you being aligned with your value, knowing your value, knowing that you're already enough. You healing this high achiever wound. And so there's a bunch of things when you're a high achiever, you don't, you may have felt like you're not acceptable, right? You may feel like you don't have a right to sit still. You're always committed to something. There's some level, there's some level of deeper shame about just your basic sense of self and you're masking that um, or trying to escape you know, what you feel about yourself deep down inside by accomplishments. Go make that money, honey, right? You're like, if I go make this money, go um, help other people, accomplish things, get the awards, be in my community, be seen, like just go create and all these things. I can escape the basic sense of inadequacy that I already have on the inside. And that is why when you accomplish the things that is why every time you hit a goal, you still don't feel successful. Or there's this level of even sadness, like that was it? Wait, I just did that thing that I thought was going to make me feel more validated and it didn't. What? <laughs> and I love that God does not allow it to fill the gap. He does not because he wants to fill that on the inside of you, right? Right? That sadness, that hollow feeling after a great achievement, is not, none of it will be sufficient enough to solve the pain and restlessness on the inside. You know what, was a, what has been the biggest shifts for me has been when I stumbled and when I failed and I had nothing to grasp on to, right? You don't have those straws, which we're talking about achievements, accolades, all the things. They're not there to grab onto. And God just leaves you bare, just sitting there looking at him. And he's saying, daughter, you are still enough. 
Even when there's zero dollars in your bank enough, you're still my daughter. You're still a part of my legacy, right? We're in a new family. Even when all the clients have, they're gone and they've dried up and you're sitting there looking, it was like, but you know, you accomplished so many great things in the past, but look at where you're at now, right? Or where you were, where there was nothing and God trying to say, daughter, you are enough even when you're not producing even when you're not accomplishing. I went through a big transition when my kids went to school because being a homeschooling mom was part of my identity. When we would go to the store at 11 o'clock in the middle of the day, me and my kids are gonna go to a field trip, we're gonna explore, we're gonna get some supplies for a project we forgot about or something. And people are looking like, what are those kids doing out of school? We homeschool. I have a homeschooling mom and everyone's like, oh, I don't know how you do it, blah, 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 all the accolades, all the praise, all the things, right? 13 years of doing that, that becomes a part of your identity, okay? <laughs> if you're not careful, I wasn't careful. I tell you, I know this wound too well, the high achiever wound. And being in this season now where homeschooling is no longer on the table, God has had to help me redefine myself, right? And make it really clear to me that my value is not in what I produce. My value is in who I am being, who I'm becoming. It's all about the internal things. It's about my joy that I choose. It's about the satisfaction that I'm intentional about identifying that's not connected to being successful, (laughs) right? It's things like I will be satisfied when I walk out into my town and I go downtown and I go meet different business owners and I introduce myself to them and I just build a relationship. Is that some defining success moment? No, But it means that I was obedient to what God told me to do when he told me to leave my house. (laughs) And I went out there and I met people and built relationships and I learned their stories. And we got to have a real life connection. That was valuable to me because I love connecting with people. I love getting to know people. Right. That's a part. That is a part of who I am. Not pro makeup artists, not celebrity makeup artists. You fill in the gap. Right, You fill in a title. That is not who you are. Who you are has more to do with your values, has everything to do with who God has created you to be. And so, yes, there is a cost that we pay um, as high achievers. And it is that our drive, our motivation comes from this core wound of low self-esteem, insecurity, invalidation, and it all stemmed from childhood. And if you resonate with this episode, I just want to encourage you to connect with me. I love, love, love private one-on-one containers where I can help you to really get to the core of that wound, whether it's a soul part, whether It is a spirit part because the enemy likes to take this stuff too, right? He's like, oh, that's an open door right there. That insecurity, that invalidation. And I can just pour more fuel onto it, right? So we don't know. But we can go to the Father through our mind-body work that is rooted in biblical principles. And we can start healing from this high achiever wound, (laughs) right? So... Thank y'all for listening to this episode. Um, I really do appreciate it. When you all subscribe to the podcast, it lets Apple, Spotify, all of them know that, you know, I'm putting out information that you truly value. When you leave a review, that helps me. That lets other high achieving, y'all know I love to work with high achieving, multi-passionate women of faith. Um, women leaders, entrepreneurs, career professionals, CEOs, um, those in leadership positions. Because when you, as a leader, are healed, that trickles down to your teams. That trickles down to your organization. 
right? So I know that when you do your inner work, it is going to have an impact that has such a huge ripple effect. And I want to support you with that. So, all right, there will be some um, links in this, in the show notes that um, are resources of articles and different places where I found these statistics. So if you are a researcher like me and you want to, um, you know, go read these articles and these things for yourself, be my guest. I'm also going to leave a book recommendation, which is the High Achievers Guide to Happiness, Confidence, and Success. It is the gap in the gain. And I will do another episode next month on this book. So if you want to go check it out, definitely go do that. But um, the link is in my Amazon storefront. I have an Amazon storefront. And um, you can click that if you go to the show notes. You may have the copy and paste. I'm not sure how they're showing it. But um, the Amazon storefront is where you can find all my book recommendations. So there's probably over 50 books on there that are rooted in mindset, spirituality, inner healing, deliverance, success, um, all that stuff. (laughs) So, all right. Thank y'all for listening. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Soulfully Aligned You. If something we shared encouraged you, shifted your mindset, or caused you to take action, it would be so nice if you left us a review. Your review helps this podcast to show up for more multi-passionate mompreneurs of faith just like you. Mm-hmm.